Hi everybody, welcome to part 2 of the ALICE 3 uh, parameters tutorial. Uh, so the next, since we have the bunny moving forward a good distance to his friend, we're going to make him say a greeting now. So we can just drag in a this say procedure into the visit procedure. And we'll just make him say hello for now, that's fine. And now next thing we're going to do is make him jump over his friend. So in order to do that, we want the bunny to move up one meter because we already said that that's the maximum jump we're going to use. He'll move up one meter, then he'll move forward one and a half meters. This is to make up for the one meter that he's already in front of the friend. We want him to land half a meter behind his friend, and we want him to cross uh, the depth of his friend as well. So we're going to make need him to move forward 1.5 meters plus the depth of his friend. And after that, we'll just make him move back down one meter to hit the ground. So the first thing we're going to do is make him move up one meter. Next, we're going to drag in a move forward, and we'll make it make him move forward 1.5 for now. So we can add, um, add a custom decimal number, and just type in 1.5. So move forward 1.5, and then we'll make him move down one again. And now to the move forward method, we need to add the depth of his friend, right? So we need to first go to the math, um, math options and add um, a, some, a, some number. We're just going to make it one for now. And now we need to access um, this friend to visit parameters functions. Uh, in order to do that, we just need to go to the selection bar and it will actually have the parameters here. We'll click on friend to visit and now we have access to the friend to visit procedures and functions. So we'll first go to the functions, and we'll get the um, get the depth function from right here, and we can drag it over the one. So now the bunny is going to move forward 1.5 meters plus the friend to visit's depth. Uh, so now we can test this if we press run. Perfect. Um, and we I can also test this with all the other animals as well. So in order to do that, we can just keep dragging. We can go to the bunnies methods and keep dragging in the bunnies out of visit. We'll do it for the bison, do it for the camel, do it for the chicken. I already have it for the chicken. Well, I could change this really quickly to the gopher and do it for the tortoise as well. And so if you press run, I'm just going to speed it up so you guys can see everything that happens. He jumps over the chicken, jumps, he jumps through the bison, and jumps through the camera. This is an important detail that we need to fix. Because the bunny can only jump one meter high, he's going to um, run through the bison and the camel. And so that's the um, next thing we need to fix. So, since the bison and the camel are greater than one meter in height, bunny, the bunny can't jump over it. So, what we need to do is um, create a new, an if else statement that allows the bunny to go around a tall friend. So, the first thing we're going to do is write an if else statement so we can get started on this. I made the condition true by default. And so, if the, if the um, bunny's friend is less than one meter, we want him to do our jump procedures, right? So... The first thing we want to do is uh, change this true condition, and we want to change it to if um, we want to change it to a comparator. We want to change. We want to compare the friend's height to the number one. So in order to do that, we need to uh, click on this true, and we need to uh, change it into a decimal number relation, uh, relational decimal number comparator. And we can just click the first one, which is the less than, and we're just going to compare one and one. And so basically, we have to go back to the friend's uh, functions and we need to get their height. So the friend to visit's height is less than one. So we'll drag it right here. If the friend to visit's height is less than one, we want to do the jump method. So we can drag in these three jump methods right here. And make sure you don't drag them into the same order as before. So he moves up first, then forward, and then down. And so if this statement is false, so if the friend's taller than one meter, we want the bunny to go around the friend rather than jump through them. So in order to do that, we're gonna use um, a bunny turn. We're gonna use bunny turn methods. We're gonna make the bunny turn spin around the, his friend. 
So in order to do that, we'll go to procedures. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the bunny turn left a quarter of a revolution. One quarter of a revolution. And then we're going to make him turn right a half of a revolution. But this time, he's going to do it as seen by. So we'll click, click add detail and we'll do it as, as seen by his friend. So now if we run the world, we can see if this works correctly. He jumps over the chicken, goes around the bison, goes around the camel, and jumps over the gopher, and jumps over the tortoise. So this is working out pretty well for right now. And now the next thing we're going to, and now the last thing we're going to add to, so this is the basic idea of using parameters. And the last thing we're going to uh, do to uh, finish this world up, we're actually going to add one more parameter. We're going to add a string parameter because we want um, him to say, give a custom a custom greeting to each one of his friends. So in order to do that, we're going to add another parameter. And so Alice is going to yell at you about this because we've already um, called this method five times, right, for each of the friends that he visits. So Alice is um, telling us that if we add a new parameter now, we have to remember that we need to set this parameter in all the five invocations that we already have. Otherwise, the program is going to break, is going to crash when we run it. And the reason Alice is telling us is telling us all this is so we remember that. So, anyways, we're going to create a new string parameter because we want to feed a string to this parameter. So when we go to the type. Uh, we'll go. To, we'll create a text string type, which is as simple as one of the first four options. And you need to check that you understand that you need to update the invocations of this procedure since we are adding a new parameter. And we're just going to name this uh, this parameter greeting. And you can drag the greeting down over the hello. And so now we have this greeting. Uh, we have this empty greeting parameter. And so now when we go back to my first method where we have all these calls. We need to set all these all these greetings to some sort of um, string. So I'm just gonna make him say to the chicken. I'll make him say hello, chicken. Uh, to the bison, I'll make him say hello, bison. I'm making these up on the fly. I can't think of anything really funny or clever right now. I'll make him say how's the desert for the camel. Gosh, that's awful. Um, I'll make him for the gopher. I'll make him say, "How's it like under the golf course?" Gold, gold course is better, but oh well. And then for the desert tortoise, I'll make him say, um, "How's the weather in your shell?" I should never do improv ever. Oh, jeez, how the weather? I can add that really quick just by clicking on it. Nope. I click custom text string and adding the apostrophe S. Okay. So we have all these greetings. So now if we run this, you say hello chicken, hello bison, how's the desert, how's that going on the golf course, and how's the weather in your shell? And we'll stop it there. Um, so that's it. That's all I have for part two. Um, join me back for part three where we'll um, add the event that allows us to click on the animals and the bunny will go greet them. Uh, thank you for watching.